Elder Barge is the phenomenally talented frontman for one of my favorite groups of all time, DeBarge. He is out now with his first solo project in over 15 years. Hard to believe. The new disc now nominated for two Grammys is called, appropriately enough, Second Chance. Here I crack up every time I see you because, for those who don't know, and this is like unheard of in this industry. So L is like 49 years, can I say that? Yeah. I think I just did. Yeah, you so, did. <laughs> L's almost 50, keep that camera on L. What you're looking at is an almost 50 year old man who had a drug problem for two decades and God has protected the look, the aesthetic. He's protected the voice and L is back with a CD that I am just absolutely in love with. God loves you. I love him. Yeah. <laughs> he loves us all, man. Yeah. I'm just here to um, be a, a testimony of his grace and his goodness and his love for all mankind. Yeah. What, what, do you, what do you make of the fact, though, as I said, that you, you know, you're not a spring chicken anymore? First of all, you didn't get my memo. You never come to my show dressed better than I am. Okay. That's first thing. Let's just get that out the way right now. You cannot outdress the host. All right, that's first thing. But on a serious, on a serious note, though, um, 20 years of battling drug addiction. Yes. And the voice, that falsetta, is still yes. there. You still have, you know, again, that, 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 what women love about you, the look, you still have that. I mean, what do you make of the fact that you still have the voice after all these years? Well, you know, first and foremost, um, we know it's God. Yeah. Because um, you're not supposed to survive this. Yeah. You're not supposed to survive uh, crack, period. You know, uh, especially 22 years of crack. And then there was, you know, um, periodic, periodically it was heroin, mm -hmm. you know. And, uh, and that, that should have took me out, too. You know what I mean? Um, the drinking and all of that. Mm -hmm. um, but my heart was set for God. And, and uh, he knew he had a purpose yet for me. Mm -hmm. And he knew he would rescue me. And this time with, with a great testimony. Yeah. So it's, it's even bigger and better now because I've come from something. And I slipped forward. I didn't slip backwards because I know that I won't do the same things I did before. I won't make them same mistakes. I'm still looking at the finish line, Tevis. Yeah. You came on stage at the BET Awards a couple of times. Once to do your new song, right. Second Chance. Right. Then you come back out and you do this medley. You killed the BET. I was not watching it that night when it, when it, when it, when it aired. But my phone started blowing up. The computer started popping off, and everybody's like, you have to see L. Wow. So I couldn't get to a TV fast enough to, to rewind to find, you know, to see what you had done. I raised all that to ask what this BET appearance did to revive this career. What it did for me whew, is priceless to me mm -hmm. because um, all of the millions of viewers that saw me that night on BET, um, they had a second chance to see my second chance. Mm, I like they that. Yeah. they saw me nervous. They saw me You were nervous that night? Oh, uh, they saw me but they saw the triumph. Yeah. Um, that God had wrought in me. But you were nervous though. Oh, I was very nervous. Wow. I was very I turned around on that stage and uh, everybody was was cheering and and just full of joy and on, up on their feet and that's what got me through it. Mm -hmm. But prior to that, I was nervous. Um, BET I'll never never ever forget them for this wonderful blessing they gave to me to be on the 10th annual BET Awards for my comeback. Yeah. Um, this song that I referenced, Second Chance, it is, I mean, y'all are working it because you could not have picked a better song with a more potent lyric to come back um, yeah. the way you've come back. But tell me about the song, Second Chance, and how, how you landed on that song. Second Chance is a song that was, um, it was in the making the whole time of my drug addiction because mm -hmm. I was calling out for that second chance. I was saying, God, rescue me. Give me, give, give it to me again. Please help me. But clearly, I have to get healed first. I have mm -hmm. to get well first. But then when I get well, um, will there be a second chance for me? Will people still want to hear my voice? Will they, will they forgive me? You know, and um, Second Chance is not just about... Um, my drug addiction, my comeback from drugs, but it's also, it, it, it commemorates and speaks the sentiments of a lot of people's hearts out there in the whole world looking for second chances in marriages. Uh, mm -hmm. They've lost jobs, they've lost homes, mortgages, you know, second chance. Yeah. You and I have talked about this, you know, privately and publicly, um, and you shared with me that there were people, drug dealers, uh, when you were caught up in this for 22 years who were such fans of yours, who adored you so much, loved your family so much, like all the rest of us do, they wouldn't even sell you. You were trying to buy, and there's certain folks that I am not L. DeBarge gonna sell you no drugs. They wouldn't sell it to me. They couldn't, um, and then they ran 
they, they, they were the heads of certain districts of, you know, where, where drugs were sold, mm -hmm. certain areas, and they called to all the people. And they said, if you see them, and, they, and, and, and they were, and some people told me, said, man, I can't do it because uh, he'll shut me down or he'll, or, he'll, or, or he'll beat me up if I give it to you, man. You know what I, mean? I can't do it, Al. <laughs> so, they, so people really were protecting you they, they said, man, from I, yourself. Now, that's interesting because, you know, most of the drug dealers that, that we all know, they don't care. Exactly. They just want the money. Mm -hmm. But the anointing of God was so heavy on me that it even reached their spirit. And I think they, were, they found themselves compelled to follow a role that their feet was on. Yeah. They, just, they just said, no, I just can't do it, man. You know, you know that's the Holy Ghost. When drug dealers turn down money, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that ain't nothing but the Holy Ghost. My mama told it. me I'm not fit for nothing but the kingdom of God. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and your mom was right, but, but yeah. your, mama's, your mama's statement is true for all of us, though. Yes. Um, Ron Isley, another great artist, iconic artist, on this program just a few weeks ago, I asked Ron this question, and we asked you the same question, and I think the answer is going to be the same. So Ron was telling me when he was on lockdown that the brothers insisted that he perform. Uh, yeah. I assume that you must have had the same... Pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> so on the one yeah, hand, the brothers on the street won't sell you drugs. <laughs> right. But uh, the brothers in prison <laughs> must have told you that if you didn't say you were going to be in trouble. Well, the thing is, they get an attitude, you know. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, I, I sang and I sang. And then the one time that I, I said, well, man, I'm tired. Well, we'll skip you in a crackhead. Y'all be glad somebody <laughs> wants you to sing. <laughs> I said, my, what? <laughs> so, you, so when they said scene, you had to, you had to skip to it. Oh man, you know, because you never know, you might you might need them the next yeah. day to, to help you out of it. Yeah. How, how, how how did you? Um, this is not the way you were raised. This ain't the experience that you grew up having in in, in Michigan. We grew up in the same church. Right. Um, how, how did you? survive being in a place where you had no business being that's just not who you are it's clearly not who i am um i hid most of the time i found uh myself hiding in my own house mm -hmm. that's that's how bad it had my mind i would you know i have a house and and four bedrooms and i'd be in a closet 24 7 mm -hmm. just in the closet just stuck you know, um, wondering how in the world did I get myself into this, but how do I get out of it? Mm -hmm. um, I, didn't, I didn't really hang out that much with people. I tried to stay to myself, but you, you got to get out because you, you want more drugs. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so I don't know. I was, that's, that was my biggest question. How did, how did I get here? Yeah. This, this is not me. So you're back, and you're back in a big way, and I know the question that many people are asking is whether or not you can handle I, I just I saw a quote the other day. Mm. Be careful of the catastrophe that success can bring. So you feel competent to handle all this because it, yeah. it's back and it's hitting you so fast. Everybody's glad you're back and everybody wants to see hear the record. And see the way you be, the way you can be careful of the catastrophe that success can bring is by paying attention to something else that comes along with success. Mm -hmm. Responsibility. Mm -hmm. Along with success comes responsibility. Keep your eye on what you're responsible to and what you're responsible for, and that'll keep you right. Mm. Tell me about the music. How do, how do you, when you, when your second chance, of course, the title track, but when you're putting together a record that ain't just a record, this is the first time in 15 years you've done the solo thing. Mm -hmm. Everybody's waiting to hear it. We want to, we want to see if the chops are still there. We know that El DeBarge, DeBarge family sound, that switch sound that we're used to hearing. So how do you go about putting together a record that you think is going to work for us? Oh my goodness, Tapas, I felt the pressure from the from the first <laughs> song. <laughs> From writing the first song, collabing the first song, you know, from Jimmy Jam to Terry Lewis, Baby Face, the Avila Brothers, everybody on this album, Ron Fair, it's like everybody, every time I got behind the mic, it was like, this listening, you know, right. it's like, it's just like <laughs> <laughs> so we put together um, a, a, a great feel-good album, man. We took our time, as much time as we were allowed to take. Um, my manager, Pete Farmer, was very instrumental in putting all these producers together and, and putting all the songwriters together with me. Then uh, we finished this beautiful album, and then I go out on tour, and then I got the audience looking at me like this. <laughs> so you used to this it's, by now, huh? Like, it's like, you bet not hit a wrong. I wish you would. I wish you would. I would know something. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I, I wanted, I, I'm, I'm one of those people who was doing like this. <laughs> so I'm full of joy. Yeah. I have a song on my CD called Joyful. I heard it today. And I'm full of joy, man. I'm so joyful.
exceedingly. Yeah. <laughs> He's talented, and I'm just, I, uh, I'm gonna stop before I start crying. Because for those of us who are DeBarge family fans, we've been waiting for this moment for a long time. For L to be back, to be himself, and to give us what he gives uh, so well. That beautiful voice and lyrics that you... See, part of what makes your stuff so great is that you sing stuff that everybody can sing along with. And we don't sound like you. <laughs> but the lyrical... Con <laughs> well, I do in my shower, of course. Uh, but we, we can sing along, and the stuff is just so uplifting. So, L, I'm, I'm, I could not be more happy that you were back, and congratulations. Thank you so much. Oh, man, I'm honored to, honored to have you here. The new CD from L. DeBarge is called, appropriately again, Second Chance. If you don't get but one record this year, you have to get this and add it to your collection. L. DeBarge, good to have you here. That's our show for tonight. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, keep the faith.